I was really thinking of, about the whole stage as a kind of canvas and how I could enliven the entire space. So I was thinking of modes of perception and that each mode of perception was a world. So, and I was, I think I was quite influenced by the visual artists, the way that they worked with materials, because I came more from a music and movement and, and performing background. In that way, I, I think I was more sophisticated than some of the visual artists that didn't really work with time as an element. That be, you know, time is, is part of what we work with and rhythm, you know, that's part of our vocabulary. But the way that the visual artists use the plasticity of materials and, and an object as content, that really inspired me. I think the first idea that I had was uh, this idea of accumulating a sound structure and I was working very much with um, live sound and then taped sound and then live image and then film image and how the scale and the sense of each of those two perceptions could be altered by adding another element. So that was, in a sense was a, a media exploration. Mm -hmm. So for example, the first image in the piece, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting on a chair with my back to the audience and I'm playing guitar and I'm singing and then uh, after a few phrases, you hear that phrase coming on over the speakers and it's a little bit distorted and it becomes a little bit more distorted and that, then it becomes a loop. That was the first time that I thought of sound as an overall environment. It was the first time I really worked with my voice as a primary element. Um, first time I really made a full sound score. I mean, 16 millimeter earrings was so much a first for me. It was the first time that I worked with film and I was thinking in, fil in terms of film uh, about scale, about how um, on stage, if I wanted to get this sense of a face, I couldn't really get that. I mean, I could put a little frame around it, but you would never get that sense of the scale relationship. And so that also became something that was very primary. I think I was trying to make a visual and sonic poem. And it was very important that it was unified. It wasn't, because in those days also, there were a lot of people that were throwing film on the screen. I mean, there were a lot of people that were thinking the medium is the message. So you'd have, you know, people that were using film, but it was very arbitrary and not very satisfying. So I just really wanted to craft it so that there were these layers of meaning, layers of emotion, and also, visual, what I would call visual rhymes. I, I really thought of it as a poem with rhymes, but the rhymes were visual. So for example, you have, and, and you could say that it was built on, on motifs. So I dyed my hair red for the piece, and then you see at a certain point the, the crepe paper flames coming out of the table, so that almost was like hair. And then you see at the end the little doll uh, room, which was almost like an effigy with red hair. And you know, it just was it was just these ways of accumulating layers of correspondence, I guess. Also, I think what's interesting about 16 millimeter earrings is that in a way, uh, my performing was the last thing that came in there. Um, so that's also very, you know, I always felt very good about my performing. But I, I really objectified myself in a certain level. I had it so worked out that I could almost walk into it. And, you know, it was, it, in that way, again, I feel like it's more a visual arts piece. And it's so funny how people look at solos and they, they, they mistake that, well, if you're doing this piece, then it's autobiographical. I mean, that's the last thing that I think about. You know, it's really more, I am also an element in this. But at the same time, I said, I can use my hair as an object, and then I can build on my hair as an object, and then that goes into the wig, and that goes into the the paper. I can use my you know my singing and my playing as a, you know like anything in my life. I can put and use that as a material, but I'm still objectifying it. I'm not caught up in it. It's more that I put that on the table, and that's a possible element in a piece. And I think then later on when the performance art as a field came out, a lot of people were working in that way. 
I knew at that point I just had to follow my own path. For me, that identity as an artist and my, um, you know, finding my own sensibility and, you know, really, really listening to my own voices uh, and really trusting that sense of creativity, um, you know, was very, very important to me. I mean, it was just, this was life and death for me. I was so intense. And that piece, I, you know, I was living that piece 24 hours a day.